All right, so uh, my name is John Paul Posada. I'm the educational technologist for the Faculty of Engineering at UNSW. That's the University of New South Wales, and that's a mouthful. Um, for the past few years at uh, UNSW, I've been working a lot um, to manage very large courses. And by very large, I mean a course of uh, about 1,500 students. Uh, to do this and to run these courses, it's mostly project-based courses and a lot of um, teamwork that hap happens in these courses. So students join projects, they form teams, and then they produce uh, an outcome from, th from those uh, teams. And that's what we've been doing for the past uh, about five to eight years. And with those needs, I, uh, I needed some help from a developer and a very talented developer. That's him. Oh, shucks. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Morgan Harris. I'm the plugin developer for the Faculty of Engineering at uh, UNSW. Uh, my mic should be on. Yes, it is. Right? Everyone can hear me? Yes. Good. Um, uh, so we've made some cool new Teamwork plugins, and uh, we're going to show you one of them. It's called uh, Team Evaluation. So, uh, so what is Team Evaluation? Why should you bother with it? Well, think about what happens when you mark a group assignment. Well, you generally are going to go with this solution. Can everyone read that? Yeah, it's fine. Um, you give everyone the same mark. That's not really optimal and it's kind of not fair. This is something that a lot of students will complain about with, with group work, is that uh, it's not a, a, they don't end up with a fair grade that reflects the amount of work they did. Of course, you have the other option, which is to assess everyone individually, but that's not really feasible, especially with the kind of courses we're talking about where there's like 1,000 or 1,500 students. So there is another way, uh, and that is to ask them. Ask. Uh, the best way to determine uh, the amount of the contributions of each team member is to ask their teammates. And you actually should uh, get them to ask themselves as well. You should get them to uh, self-reflect because that is actually a very important skill uh, that you need to hone in higher education. And to do this, we, we basically take the approach of, uh, of uh, team-based learning. Uh, and we follow four main, um, four main possible um, groups of this which we think team evaluation addresses. And that's, first we, we manage the group, and we manage the group uh, well through early evaluation. So using team evaluation, we can give the team members early feedback so that they know how they're doing within their team, what their teammates think of their progress, and so on. Instead of waiting till the end of the uh, product to give them feedback then, which really isn't gonna be helpful because they're already done with their teamwork. And we give them timely feedback, as I mentioned, that comes throughout the whole process of, uh, of their uh, work together. This helps with, uh, with accountability. So every individual within the team feels accountable to the team because they know that they're going through this process. It's not just about what they produce, but it's about how they produce that. And, and that's important. And team evaluation helps, uh, helps with that. And it also helps promote uh, team development which is part of the assignment design. And that, that really separates the, the outcome and the process. And we really want to measure both. So the outcome is important because it's the product that they're going to produce. But we also want to make sure that the, the process of getting to that outcome was, uh, was also evaluated and something that they need to consider about, about how that went. Because you don't want one person in the team to feel responsible for the whole team's work and do all the work, basically. Uh, that's not what teamwork's about. All right, so what actually is going to happen in team evaluation, right? So let's take a look at the, the, the regular first, uh, the way we do things now. We assign a mark, and everyone gets that mark. But, you know, these people aren't these faceless gray automatons. They're, uh, they're individuals, and they've all brought different things to the group. So uh, you, uh, you want to know who brought what. So how do you find out? Well, if you ask them the right questions, you'll find that they have some pretty well-formed opinions about who did what and, uh, and how the group works together. And in aggregate, that actually forms a pretty decent data set. And if you, uh, if you throw self-reflection in as well, then uh, you're well on your way to understanding that group dynamic. So how do we use? these uh, emojis to uh, turn that into fairer grades. Well, that's where team evaluation comes in. Team evaluation takes them and uh, turns those opinions into numbers. And then we can use those numbers 
to adjust grades. So uh, I'm going to take you quickly through uh, a little worked example. It's a very simple one. It's just a sort of one to five question. One's the worst, five's the best. How much work did, uh, did each team member put in? Uh, so for this one and only question, Bill has given himself uh, a four out of five. Uh, he's, uh, he's a big fan of himself. Mary uh, has given, he's given Mary three out of five. Uh, he's given Lee five. He thinks Lee's pretty good. Mary is less of a fan of Bill. Uh, she's given him a two. Uh, she's a big fan of herself, though. Uh, she's given herself a five out of five. Um, and so on. And so we can see with all these scores, a couple of important things. First of all, uh, Roberto here has not uh, completed the question, and that'll be important later. But also, these, uh, these bars are all different lengths. Uh, and that's actually kind of a problem, because we're not doing a quantitative assessment here. We're actually asking them to compare teammates against each other. So really, all fives would be the same as all ones. Whether you think your teammates are all equally terrible or equally fantastic, it doesn't matter because they all put in an equal amount of work. Um, so we have to uh, fix this. We have to adjust these scores. And the way we do that is pretty simple. We just stretch the bars out so they all add up to 100. Um, except they actually all add up to 125 because Roberto didn't mark anything. We actually need the sum of all these grades to be equal to the number of people in the group uh, for reasons that will become obvious in a second. Uh, so after that, it's very simple. We just take all those bars and we just stack them on top of each other. Uh, and you end up with uh, people's team evaluation score and a reflection of how much work they put in. Um, so you can see Roberto's obviously super lazy. He didn't even complete the questionnaire. Uh, but Lee has done the bulk of the work. So uh, how do we adjust the marks? Well, here's the mark we gave the group. So the, the group assignment received a 65. Uh, and normally, you just give 65 to everyone. You can see on the face of it, that's not fair. So uh, we just multiply those numbers together, and we get our adjusted grades that you saw earlier. So uh, now John Paul's going to tell you a bit about the, uh, the existing tools and uh, why so, you decided to go into Yeah, so basically the, the state of play. The state of play is um, uh, when I first started looking into this, there, there were a few tools out there that I took into consideration. Um, so the first one was uh, WebPA. And WebPA is, um, uh, stands for Web Peer Assessment. It's out of Loughborough University. It's an open source tool. And it was my number one choice. And my number one choice, because of the fact that it was an open source tool, and the fact that it had a lively uh, developer community and user community. The other tools that are, that are important and worth mentioning are um, CatMe. CatMe is a whole suite of tools which really takes the whole team process from building a team to evaluating a team's performance. And, and it's very, um, it was a project that's been going on for a long time. It was a National Science Foundation grant funded project. Uh, it was free for a long time up until next year. Next year, they're going to start charging uh, a small fee to students, uh, or, or per student, not to students. That, um, the fact that it's not open source and not easily integrated into the systems that I use was a reason why I didn't choose that tool. Uh, the other tool is Spark Plus. Spark Plus is developed at a UTS. It does a very similar thing. It basically tries to even out the score based on how students feel their team members, members performed within the team. And the reason I didn't choose UT, uh, Spark Plus was also because of the fact that it's not open source, not easily integrated into our systems. So we used WebPA for a while. Uh, it was a good tool. It was open source. I was able to host it myself and manage it myself for a while until it became a little bit too, too much work, too much administrative work. I had to put users in, take user marks out, notify users of their marks, get Morgan to help me develop special uh, reporting tools from it. Um, finally, we decided, let's, let's make this a, a little more integrated into the systems that we use. So we put it into Moodle um, with a plugin that pretty much functions like an LTI. It basically sends our users over to the WebPA and then uh, sends their marks and responses back into Moodle to, to give them a final mark. That was good for a while. And then I decided, no, nah, let's make it better. So Morgan made it better. So what's, uh, what's different about a Moodle plugin? Why, why would you bother doing a, a proper Moodle local plugin? 
Well, first of all, it's uh, about integration. So a local plugin obviously is going to integrate a lot better into uh, the tools that are already in Moodle. So the most important thing is that you, you find it where you expect it, which is in the, uh, the activity, the group assignment tool. And you can see right here, you've got your, uh, your assignment up the top, you've done your submission, and right below it is team evaluation. It's right where you expect to find it. And uh, the other thing about it, of course, is that it's extensible with sub-plugins, because everyone loves plugins. And the M in Moodle stands for modular. Uh, we're all about the plugins. Uh, so it is almost entirely plugins. Uh, we got the best plugins. We have got the amazing plugins. We got, uh, we got, we got, we got uh, the questionnaire. The questionnaire is the first thing you'll see in Team Eval. Uh, you'll, uh, your students will fill it out. You'll create it. Uh, all the question types are plugins. Uh, they're not question bank plugins, because question bank plugins have the idea of right and wrong, whereas these are a lot more sort of ambiguous. Um, so we, uh, we've made our own plugin architecture for that. Activities are obviously plugins. Um, but uh, we've got a little thing inside uh, an a, a activity that uh, wants to adopt team eval uh, called an evaluation context, and that's how it talks to, uh, to team evaluation. And then obviously we have to have the questionnaire feed into the activity plugin to adjust the grade, so we've got an evaluator. Even the evaluator is a plugin. Uh, there's only one at the moment, but there'll be more coming. Um, and then obviously we've got to get some data out here. We've got to We've got to do evidence-based learning, and so we've got a bunch of reports, and all the reports are also plugins. So the plugins we've got at the moment, uh, there are two question types. Uh, they are the Likert scale, sort of 0 to 10, 1 to 5, whatever number to whatever number you want to do. Um, and the comments type, that doesn't actually provide a value, but just allows you your uh, students to enter feedback uh, that their peers can see. Um, we got in future coming uh, versions, we'll have a, a split 100 where you have to sort of uh, divide up a pie uh, amongst your, your teammates. Uh, and a contribution matrix is sort of a big matrix of checkboxes, and you can say who contributed what to the group assignment. Uh, activities, there's actually only one built in Moodle activity that uh, supports group submission, uh, and that's the assignment plugin. Uh, there is also a third party. Well, we developed in-house a version of Workshop that supports group submission, uh, and that is available on uh, both the Netspot GitHub and the version that supports Team Eval is available on my GitHub. You can find a link to that in the Moot page for this talk. Um, so those are the, the activities that are supported at the moment. Uh, if you develop your own activity plugin uh, and you want to adopt Team Eval, please come talk to me uh, and please read the implementer's guide on the GitHub. Uh, there is, as I said, only one evaluator plugin. We call it Loughborough. Uh, it's based on WebPA. WebPA was developed at the University of Loughborough. Um, it, it weighs self-assessment equally to uh, peer assessment. So if you think that might be a problem, probably the best thing to do is turn off self-assessment. Um, and it, uh, as you saw earlier, is just basically a, a simple weighted mean uh, of all the, the grades. Um, and yeah, it's a, the worked example we saw earlier. That's exactly how the Loughborough evaluator works. So in future versions, we will have some more evaluators um, based on the uh, the plugin, based on the, uh, the tools that John Paul mentioned earlier. Um, we're going to have a Campdown one based on Spark Plus. We have Raleigh based on uh, Catme. Noticing a theme, it's named after the place where it's from. And we're going to have Kensington because UNSW is in Kensington. So we're going to sort of try to devise our own cool take on uh, how, to, how to best evaluate those scores. And then uh, we've got a bunch of report plugins. Oh, good, I did screenshot these. Um, got uh, scores plugins, just the scores uh, everyone got. We got responses, so that's like the actual detailed individual responses that everyone's given to those questions. Uh, and we've got feedback. Uh, and the cool thing about the feedback plugin uh, feedback report is these little switches down the side. Because uh, what they do is allow you to uh, reject feedback that was given that you think uh, the person it was given about might not want to read. Uh, it's a good way to sort of protect against trolls and bullies and people who just write the F word six times in a row. Um, 
And uh, oh yeah, what I did there. Uh, and in future versions, uh, we're going to have a self-assessment to peer assessment ratio, so you can see people who are like bigging themselves up or maybe a bit down on themselves, uh, and a outlier uh, assessments uh, report, which would sort of try and uh, highlight people who you think or who we think might be trying to gain the system. Uh, and we've got a bit of built-in API. Do I have time to go into this? Not really. Um, I dive through it if there's any developers. Are there any developers in the room? There's like a handful. Okay. Um, I'll dive through it. So we just got a bit of uh, that uh, accept and reject before. If you're developing a plugin that does uh, feedback, you should opt into that. Um, we've got uh, report downloads, a really easy way to do report, uh, downloadable versions of reports, and uh, readable response formats. This is actually really important because uh, we do it with the comments question type. Uh, if you just had the entire comment, people could potentially dump huge amounts of text into your reports. And you might not want that if you don't want to avoid the, uh, the scroll of death or the sideways scroll of death, the even worse one. Uh, so we just take the first 50 characters and uh, give you a little button to expand it. So if you're developing a, uh, a question type plugin, you should ad take advantage of that. And there is some cool API coming in the future as well. Um, that's my Twitter handle. If you're a developer and you want to get in contact with me, um, I've got a slightly sort of more dev-focused version of this slideshow, but uh, I didn't have time to give, it, give that presentation yesterday. But I'll do like a lightning talk or something. Um, so how do you get it? Uh, well, it's in public alpha right now. Um, it is currently not feature complete, and the API isn't totally stable. Uh, so for that reason, it's not on the Moodle plugins directory yet. Uh, part of the reason is we really need modules to adopt it. Uh, again, if you're a developer, please come talk to us. Uh, but it will probably be in future uh, with a script and instructions to, on how to modify the uh, assignment plugin so that it will adopt team evaluation. And that is where you can download it. And if you can't remember that URL, I don't blame you, uh, you can find that link on the Moodle Moot page for this talk. All right, thanks anyone, everyone, uh, any questions? Nope, <laughs> great, cheers everyone. <laughs> <laughs>